Welcome to MEC 2020 Statics and Dynamics Tutorial 5. Today we will be studying structural statics. In this tutorial we will cover truss structures, truss static analysis, the method of joints, force polygons, and the method of sections. So why are we devoting an entire section of this course to the study of trusses? A truss is a very important engineering structure that is not only highly stable and resistant to forces in all directions, but also simple to calculate if given the loading on the structure. Trusses are not only applied to bridge and building engineering, but also to mechatronic and aerospace applications as well. Analyzing a truss structure provides a multitude of useful information, such as the forces in each member of the structure, the internal force state of each beam, and the overall weak link of the structure under heavier loadings. The truss is treated as a rigid static system and is simple to apply equilibrium equations to once we go over the methods of truss analysis. We have two primary methods of truss analysis in the method of joints and the method of sections, both of which this tutorial will cover. Before we analyze trusses, we should detail what information is useful to us. A beam in compression has external forces pushing into the ends of the beam and the internal forces of the beam are pushing away from the center of the beam. A beam in tension has external forces pulling the ends of the beam, while the internal forces of the beam are pulling into the center of the beam. Here we have a graphic on some of the more confusing terms that come up in statics discussion, especially to people who are not well versed in the field. Here is an elaboration on the external forces with tension and compression. I must emphasize that these are external forces, not reaction forces. Now, given the loading conditions of the previous slide on the upper and lower bars, let me just quickly draw them. Okay. Let's now inspect the internal reaction forces to the loadings given. Since the top beam is loaded in compression by external forces, the internal forces of the beam must resist the compressive forces. Therefore, the internal forces of a beam in compression must act outwards from the center of the beam. Similarly, the internal forces of a beam in tension must act inward to the center of the beam. These internal forces fulfill the requirement that at all points the system must be in static equilibrium. If we break the beam into two pieces with only external loading, we see that there is an imbalance of forces. Thus, the situation is rectified with internal forces in equal magnitude and opposite direction to the external forces. Here is a better and more mathematical visualization of tension and compression. Note the signs of the magnitude of each vector when reading this diagram. The first method of truss analysis that we will cover is the method of joints. The method of joints uses the fact that every part of the structure must be in static equilibrium to solve the entire truss structure pin vertex by pin vertex. First, the reaction forces at the base are found based on the loading. Then we construct free body diagrams at every vertex, starting from the bases where the reaction forces are known and solve the forces in each beam by solving the free body diagrams at each pin vertex and moving to an adjacent unsolved vertex which the knowledge of the previous pin vertex. This method is best in use when the forces in all members of a truss structure need to be solved. Although the method of joints is slow, often trusses are, in sym are symmetric in construction and therefore solving one side can provide the values for the other side of the truss as well. Please note that the method of joints does not use any moment formulae or moments while in two directions, which provides nice variation for the moment of sections later on. You may have to use moment methods in order to find the loading, however. To streamline free body diagram solving of the method of joints, we have provided a quick reference sheet of force polygons that make up a majority of pin vertex configurations in truss structures. These force polygons are a helpful guide in quickly establishing equilibrium equations should you be able to apply them. 
The next method we will cover is the method of sections. The method of sections involves taking a cut through the beams of which we would like to know the values of, and has the advantage of being able to solve only a certain subset of beams, as opposed to an iterative and time-consuming method like the method of joints. Some things to keep in mind when solving with a method of sections is that you will be solving questions with both moment and force equilibrium applied at various points. Remember that when a force points to or from a moment point of interest, the moment of that force about that point is zero. So in the example image here, if we take the moment about point B, we see that the moment contributions of force P2, force BD, and force BE are equal to zero. Thus, we see a direct relationship between the moment of force P1 and the force CE and can solve one force if given the other force. So here's P1, here's CE. Let's do a problem using the methods we just learned. Please pause the video and take five minutes to attempt this problem yourself. Now that you have attempted this problem yourself, let's go over our approach. We construct the free body diagram of all points in the picture. From the picture shown here, it appears much simpler to calculate using the method of joints over the method of sections, since we need to solve the entire structure. We will use the method of joints. From here, we can visibly see which components we are free to cancel due to no loading. We consider the symmetry of the structure involved and conclude that the forces on the symmetric parts of the structure must be equal. We also consider the manner of loading of the structure and the reaction to the supports and determine that some of the forces are zero. The support reactions and symmetry allow us to solve a moment equation about point at C and find the Y component of the reaction at point B and by extension, point D. Now we will analyze each individual joint. Let's start with joint A, since it is directly loaded upon. From joint A, we assume that all unknown forces are in tension. From here, we find the unit vector of the beams and multiply them with the respective unknown beam force magnitudes to generate the force vectors. From here, we set up a system of equations to solve each beam force based on the force equilibrium of each axis. From here, it's a bunch of substitution. If you're taking linear algebra, these are elementary row operations to produce reduced row echelon form. Start with the k-direction equation and add this equation multiplied with a scalar to, two, to the two other equations such that one of the force magnitudes is completely removed from both equations. From here, you can repeat the sequence with the two remaining equations until only one variable is left and is therefore solved. The other two force magnitudes are solved via substitution of the solved variable into the two and three variable equations. From here, we repeat the process of the previous slides on the force balance at joint B. And from the symmetry considerations, we have, consider we have solved the entire beam's system's forces. Here we have a problem with the same structure, but different loading considerations. Please pause the video and take five minutes to attempt this problem yourself. Now that you have attempted this problem yourself, let's go over our approach. We construct the free body diagrams of all points in the picture. From the picture shown here, it appears simpler to calculate using the method of joints over the method of sections, since we need to solve the entire structure again. We will use the method of joints. From here, we can visibly see which components we are free to cancel due to no loading. Although this is a good example problem, I will not continue with the solution process since this is the same as the last problem, albeit with different numbers and loading. Here are the answers to the beam loadings of this particular problem. Here we have a problem with a two-dimensional structure. Please pause the video and take five minutes to attempt this problem yourself. Now that you have attempted this problem yourself, 
Let's go over our approach. We construct a free body diagram of the entire structure. From here, we can determine the reactions at the supports. From the free body, the free body diagram shown above, we solve the structure reactions by using moment and force equilibrium. After this step, we move to create and solve the free body diagram at point E, since it is directly loaded upon and has relatively few forces acting from it. We find the forces facing out of the beam and recognize that the forces form a force triangle and solve the beam forces from there. The problem also asks us to find if the beam is in tension or compression, and we keep track of it here. T represents tension, and C represents compression. From here on is a repetition of creating free body diagrams at different points, and solving for the unknown forces in each beam. Once the free body diagram at joint D is solved, we have no reason to evaluate the forces at point A and B because the reactions there are already known. Here we have another truss problem to analyze and solve. Although these problems seem repetitive and simple, in exams you are required to do them within 10 to 15 minutes, and often these problems will be solved very slowly without intensive practice and familiarity. Please pause the video and take 5 minutes to attempt this problem yourself. Now that you have attempted this problem yourself, let's go over our approach. In this problem, we will use the method of sections, since we only need to solve part of the structure. We make a free body diagram of the entire structure and solve for the reactions at the supports. To perform the method of sections, we make a cut along the members of interest and take another free body diagram of the structure. So in this case, we take the cut along here. Here is the cut visualized and the unnecessary parts removed. From here, we take the free body diagram of the entire structure and solve for the force in beam FG via a summation of y direction forces on the entire structure. We also take the moment equation about the point G using the external loading considerations and solve for the force in beam FH. Note that not all of the beams point into point G, specifically beam IH and HJ. However, since we include the external loadings into our calculations, we can ignore the moment components from these unsolved beams, since we know them to be a result of the external loading already. Adding these moment contributions of these beams can be considered as double counting. This marks the end of tutorial 5 of MEC 2020 Statics and Dynamics. The topic of the next tutorial will be forces in beams and cables. If you have any additional questions on the content featured here, you may me email your course professor or tutorial instructor. Until next time, goodbye.